All right, you guys, I'm gonna continue to um, connective tissue at this point because we've got a fair number of them to go through. Muscle and nerve will be easy. Lab nine is short and easy, but let's do seven. Let's see how far we can get through seven. Um, uh, how do you guys feel about me just continuing what we're doing through the lecture part too? We can do that, right? Like we'll take our 20 minute break, obviously, but like 5.30, 6.30, we just gonna continue wherever we didn't, whatever we didn't finish. Yeah, and that's that's fine. This is like a four hour monstrosity <laughs> of histology. <laughs> four hour histology monstrosity? All Go right. for it. That's what I'm doing. Okay. Okay, so we talked about epithelial tissue. Let's talk about connective tissue, which is a very, very different monster, okay? Um, yeah, we've got four different classes of connective tissue. So um, like we had epithelial tissue, oops, pardon me, like we had epithelial tissue, um, uh, simple or stratified, squamous, cuboidal, or columnar, right? Uh, for connective tissue, we've got what is called connective tissue proper. So it's literally tissue that connects other types of tissue to each other. We also have cartilage, which is a type of connective tissue, which is specifically um, usually like kind of bendy and strong, like the cartilage in your ear, the cartilage in your nose, the cartilage in your joints. Um, that's a type of connective tissue, but it's different than connective tissue. It's not connective tissue proper. We also have bone tissue, which is also not connective tissue proper, um, but it is a type of connective tissue. And it's obviously your bones, and there's a lot of good juicy details to go with that. Um, and then blood, believe it or not, is a type of connective tissue. Um, it is um, free flowing cells in an extracellular matrix, right? It's red blood cells and white blood cells floating around in a blood plasma. So it's a type of connective tissue. All right. So we've got a few different types for each one of these, okay? For connective tissue proper, we have two major subclasses. Excuse me. We have loose connective tissue and we have dense connective tissue. These are the two types of connective tissue proper, okay? Loose connective tissue has three different types and dense connective tissue has three different types. For cartilage, we have three types of cartilage that we'll talk about. We have two subclasses of bone tissue, which are not really a very big deal. Um, the microscopic um, aspects like bone cell kind of stuff um, is a little bit weird, but interesting. Um, we'll get there. And then of course, blood tissue, which um, is not bad at all. I'm not going into any really weird detail on that. Okay, are we ready to start with connective tissue proper? Okay, loose connective tissue. Oh, all connective tissue or various types of connective tissue have functions um, including but not limited to um, binding and support, right? Uh, protection, insulation, and transportation. So the, obviously the transportation one is going to be blood tissue. Insulation is going to be um, loose, um, loose proper connective tissue. Um, Adipose tissue is a type of connective tissue. So our fat layer is a type of connective tissue that's really good for insulation, also good for protection. Um, our cartilage uh, protects um, structures within our bodies and then binding and support. So all of those other connective tissues, the ones that are proper connective tissues that bind or connect different other types of connective tissues like epithelial tissue to muscle tissue, that type of connective tissue. Um, is often used for, is fairly important for binding and support. Connective tissues all have certain things in common. So these, um, yeah, these three points are important. So make sure you get down these three bullet points right here, okay? 
all connective tissue comes from mesenchyme. Mesenchyme, we will talk about more um, in a bit, but it is embryonic. It's an embryonic type of tissue from which all connective tissue originates. So while cells are differentiating in the early embryonic stage, um, it has to differentiate like in degrees, right? So it starts off as like a ball of cells. And then it's like, okay, well, these cells are gonna be the outside of the organism and these cells are gonna be the inside of the organism. And then you go from there on the outside, on the, the dough of the donut, or the lining of the digestive tract kinds of cells. Anyway, mesenchyme is one of those types of cells from which, as the cells all differentiate, you end up with all of your proper connective tissue, your different cartilage throughout the body, all of your bones, and your blood all come from those mesenchyme cells in the early embryo, what we call mesenchyme cells or mesenchyme tissue. Um, more on that in a bit. Connective tissue can be highly, highly vascularized. Um, the uh, proper, uh, the connective tissue proper uh, is often very highly vascularized. So lots and lots of blood vessels, like lots of blood flow and support, um, which is important because they make, it makes up that basal membrane, right? That epithelial tissue lies on. And epithelial tissue is avascular, remember? So since it doesn't have its own blood supply, it depends on the connective tissue and the basal membrane to provide it with the nutrients that it needs um, for the cells to divide, for it to survive, and for it to pass whatever it is that it's taking from the apical side onto, right? It needs to pass nutrients or oxygen or whatever it's absorbing or allowing to diffuse through it um, to, into the blood vessels that are in the connective tissue of the basal membrane underneath it. Um, so on one end of the spectrum, it can be highly vascularized. On the other end of the spectrum, uh, cartilage, for instance, uh, it is pretty much avascular as well. So cartilage um, takes a really long time to heal. And um, that's why like joint injuries are so serious because when you mess up the cartilage in your joint, like if you mess up the cartilage in your knee, uh, there's not a lot of blood flow that goes to that actual tissue, so it doesn't ever really repair itself, which is why you have to do knee replacement surgery and stuff like that, because it's, it just doesn't really grow back. There isn't any blood supply in order for it to do that. It develops um, in early life, and then once it's done, it's, it's pretty much there, and it'll, it'll heal very, 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 very slowly, um, usually not fast enough for um, anybody to get anything done, right? So you have knee surgery instead. And third, most importantly, um, arguably, that is that the cells, instead of being all tightly packed together like epithelial tissue, they are all floating around in an extracellular matrix, okay? So that's basically uh, extracellular fluid or interstitial fluid. Um, which is also the ground substance, so the actual fluid that all this stuff is floating around in, and then fibers. So you've got a fluid, you've got the actual cells of the connective tissue, and then you've got all these fibers throughout it as well. So let me go back real quick. Ah, no. To our text and show you that picture again. Nifty, nifty picture. I love how it remembers. Oh, so here, it's like, check this one out. Connective tissue. Oh, also, here's our blood tissue as well. So, epithelial tissue, again, cells all tightly, tightly packed together, apical surface, basal surface. This basal surface, along with a lot of other tissues in the body, are connective tissues, which is a ground substance, extra, so it is an extracellular matrix, right? A ground substance, which is the fluid, uh, the cells themselves, the connective tissue cells, uh, which are kind of like floating around, and then all these fibers, right? So we've got all this weird fibrous stuff happening in there as well. And um, depending on the type of connective tissue, it can be highly vascularized. So here's your, here's your blood vessel. Can anybody tell me um, what type of tissue it looks like uh, is the wall of this blood vessel. 
Ooh, um, sim. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, simple squamous. Yes. Yep. Simple squamous. Boom. Yes, simple squamous epithelium. Right, because we're gonna be we're gonna allow oxygen and carbon dioxide and nutrients to diffuse back and forth. Um, Our blood, right? From the blood. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yes. Excellent. Oh, and here's another picture of the cells, the um, the ground substance, and the fibers of um, this particular of uh, connective tissue. I'm just gonna scroll past all the epithelial stuff. Oh yeah, okay. Okay. All right, so more on the ground substance. This is the fluid or the medium through which the solutes diffuse between uh, the blood capillaries and the cells. So it's interstitial or extracellular fluid. You also have proteins that are sticky. They are adhesion proteins that act as glue to keep the connective tissue together as one sort of one tissue. Um, and then you also have proteins that have a carbohydrate aspect um, to it that um, trap water in varying amounts, um, which basically lets the ground substance be either very thin and watery or very thick and gelatinous. Um, so you don't have to know super details about this, but um, the ground substance is, um, it's extracellular fluid that the cells are floating around in, um, that it has sticky uh, adhesion proteins, and it also has um, glycoproteins or proteoglycans. That's interesting. I don't really know the difference between those two things. Glycoprotein versus a proteo glycan. Weird. That's just for my curiosity. I'm not, I don't care if you guys want to look that up um, some other time. That would be cool. Uh, but I'm not going to test you on it. Are we okay with elements of connective tissue so far? Yes. Characteristics of connective tissue. Okay. The fibers floating around in the extracellular matrix. So again, extracellular matrix includes the ground substance, which is the fluid and those adhesion proteins and the um, glycopro, I keep wanting to say glycoproteins, the proteoglycans. Um, and then, so the cells are floating around in that. And then you've also got these fibers that are kind of holding it together as well. And there are three types of fibers that these can be, and they exist in different types of connective tissues um, in, in various amounts. And they actually um, give those connective tissues the characteristics that make them different types of connective tissues. So you can have collagen fibers, also known as white fibers. They are very, very strong, and they are the most abundant type of fiber in connective tissues. So again, they're extremely strong, so tensile strength, as in they're really, really hard to break if you were to pull them lengthwise. Elastic fibers are actually multiple fibers um, in a bundle. They are very, very long, very, very thin, and they can stretch like rubber bands, okay? So elastic fibers can stretch like rubber bands. And reticular fibers are, they are collagen, but they are bundles of collagen. So each individual collagen fiber is a collagen fiber. And if you put a whole bundle of them together, um, with, a, with some other stuff, don't worry about what other stuff, but if you bundle them together into short bundles, um, then they are known as reticular fibers. So because they are made of collagen fibers, they again are um, very, very strong and have high tensile strength. Uh, since they are um, short and bundled um, and branched, that makes them like even stronger. So reticular fibers are arguably the strongest type of fiber that can be found in connective tissue. So you've got three types of fibers that can be found in the extracellular matrix of a connective tissue. The types of fibers and what the ground substance, the other things the ground substance contains, um, determine what type of connective tissue we're looking at, okay? Okay, the cells of connective tissue. 
this is um this is for connective tissue for right now, but this is also generally true. Um, the cells that are like actively going through mitosis, they're actively dividing, um, have the end, have the, um, uh, what, do you, what do you call the end of a word? The uh, suffix, the suffix of blast. Um, so you have fibroblasts, chondroblasts, osteoblasts, these are like, um, like baby cells or cells of that type of um, connective tissue that are actively dividing, um, mitotically dividing. <sighs> am I recording? I am, right? Oh, fuck. I scared myself so bad right now. <laughs> okay, I'm recording. <sighs> Pardon my language. I just scared myself. Okay, so <laughs> the ones that are mitotically active are, have the suffix blast. And the ones that are mature and are not actively dividing and are just hanging out have the suffix site. So you also have um, osteocytes and chondrocytes, okay? The prefix of the um, word of the cell name tells you um, what type of cell it is. So a fibroblast is a actively dividing um, connective tissue cell. A chondroblast is a mitotically active, uh, actively dividing cartilage cell. And an osteoblast is a mitotically active, actively dividing bone cell, osteoblast. Okay, so this guy is laying down new bone, laying down new cartilage, laying down new, car new connective tissue. Chondrocytes are the cartilage cells that are already there and they're hanging out and they are not easily repaired, right? And osteocytes are the cells in bones that are just hanging out and not doing anything except being your bones, which is important, not to give them their due credit, not to not give them their due credit. Um, hematopoetic stem cells, isn't that beautiful? Hematopoetic stem cells. These are cells in your bone marrow um, that produce blood cells. Super duper important. Um, they include, they also include um, fat cells, white blood cells, um, mast cells, and macrophages, which are all part of your um, immune system. Also super important. So these are all the types of cells that we're going to find in various types of connective tissue. Fibroblasts, of course, are going to be in the connective tissue proper. Chondroblasts and chondrocytes will be in the types of cartilage that we talk about. Osteoblasts and osteocytes will be found in the bone tissue that we're going to talk about. And hematopoietic stem cells, fat cells, white blood cells, mast cells, and macrophages are cells that you can find in uh, the interior of bones, so in your bone marrow, or in your blood, right? Which is also a type of connective tissue. Are we all okay with the structures and elements associated with connective tissues? Any questions about any of this? I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, so I just wanna confirm, mm -hmm. the blasts are basically like immature cells, right? Mm -hmm. They're just like the cells that are just barely starting to process to differentiate. Yeah, they're, yeah, this, well, they are, they are technically, they differentiate very, very quickly. They're not like stem cells, like the ones that are in your bone marrow, like hematopoietic stem cells or stem cells, like the ones that you can find in your skin or in the umbilical cord or something. Um, so it's not that they're not differentiated. They're just, um, they're just, they're, they're dividing actively. They're just, it's like, it's where the, it's like, they're the cells where you can find the growth center of whatever that tissue is. Um, so like when you're growing up, and you have those growing pains in your bones. Do you remember feeling those in your bones? Um, I remember yeah. getting them like in my, like at, at your joints, right? It's at the ends of your long bones, like your knees and your hips and stuff. Um, you would feel, you can feel that because it's, it's your bones are like actually physically growing and they grow from the long, from the ends of your long bones. So you get taller by the, because the osteoblasts at the ends of your long bones are actively, dividing and that is what's pushing the ends of your long bones out and making you taller making the bones longer um that obviously stops when you get to a certain age usually 
Um, but um, yeah, so chondroblasts and osteoblasts, you don't, and maybe fibroblasts as well, you don't have as many of them and you, when you become an adult, um, but they're still there because you still need to like um, lay down bone tissue to heal, right? Um, and stuff like that. So it's more like they're um, actively dividing. And so there are a lot of like new cells there all the time. Hence the name blast, right? Blast. That, I mean, that makes blast. sense. Okay. And then the hema to, I'm not yeah, the hema hematopoietic. Hematopoietic. Yeah, that, <laughs> that one, those are just stem cells, right? Those are the immature cells. Those are the yeah, only ones. Those ones yeah, those ones are, are undifferentiated. Yeah. And they don't do the same thing as blast cells. They're just sitting in the uh, bone are, marrow these are specific there is a specific type of cell found in the bone marrow um that that produce uh blood cells um and maybe other types of cells i think uh since the with the hema um i think they just produce different if there's stem cells for like blood cells in general so like you have you have red blood cells you have white blood cells you have the you have the mast cells and the macrophages you have all there's all kinds of different cells in your blood and these stem cells are specifically for um, creating different types of blood cells. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much, yeah, Professor. No problem. Any others? Any questions? Go into the different types, I'm hoping. Oh, nope. Here's another gorgeous cartoon. How about it? So in case you hadn't gotten the picture, actually, this is kind of cool. So we've got a very generalized um, connective tissue. This is not a, any particular type, I don't think. This is just sort of a generic connective tissue so that you can see um, different cell types in here. We've got a macrophage, a white blood cell thing. Here's a fibroblast, so remember an actively dividing connective tissue cell. A neutrophil, which is also an um, immune-related cell. A lymphocyte is also an immune-related cell. A mast cell, also an immune-related cell. We've got fibers going on here in the ground substance, right? So the ground substance is the fluid. We've got collagen fibers. We've got elastic fibers. And we have reticular fibers, which are branched collagen fibers. The collagen fibers look much bigger here than I would have expected. Let me see what your text says about that. Collagen fibers. Yeah, I had to look to read the text to find out uh, collagen arranged in fine bundles. So let me read you what it says about the difference between reticular and collagen fibers because I found this to be a little bit confusing. Collagen fibers often occur in parallel bundles. The bundle arrangement adds great tensile strength to the tissue. Protein collagen found in most types of connective tissues. Whereas reticular fibers consisting of collagen arranged in fine bundles with a coating of glycoprotein provide support in the walls of blood vessels, form a network around cells and some tissues. Much, oh, okay, so reticular fibers are much thinner than collagen fibers and form branching networks. Like collagen fibers, reticular fibers provide support and strength. Plentiful in reticular connective tissue. Okay, so I misspoke before, and I'm really sorry about that. Um, collagen fibers are arranged in parallel bundles as well. They're not singular fibers. Um, they look, they're very, very thick. They are the white fibers, so ideally in most pictures they will be white. However, I'm looking at this other picture here, and they are clearly purple. So I will have to clearly label um, at least the other two fiber types, if I'm going to ask you what fiber it is. Um, if all three fiber types are present in a cell, uh, in, a, in a tissue type, I'll have to label them carefully for you guys so that you'll know which they are so that you don't have to memorize it like by color or something weird like that, or thickness or whatever. Um, I think for this image, the important part, and probably for any image really, the important part to differentiate between collagen and reticular fibers is that the collagen fibers are um, singular, long, um, and arranged in parallel bundles, whereas reticular fibers are branched. Okay, so the reticular fibers are going to be the branched ones. Um, 
even though the elastic ones look like they're branched too. So I'm just gonna have to label that really carefully for you guys. Um, so don't worry about having to identify these um, on site in a picture like this, okay? Um, we also have some fat cells because again, adipose tissue is a connective tissue and a capillary hanging out here. The wall of which is made up again of um, simple squamous epithelium. Okay. All right, so here we go again. Just like with the epithelial tissue, you're going to want to pay attention with these examples um, for each of the examples of connective tissues to the, um, the function and the location um, and the description. So the, desc the, um, the description isn't always clear with the name of these. Um, it is with some of them, but not all of them. So pay attention to the description and uh, what they do and where they can be found in the body. Okay, so we're gonna go through each one just like we did with the epithelial tissue. We're gonna start with loose connective tissue, which has these three types. Then we'll talk about dense connective tissue, talking about these three types before we talk about bone and blood. Okay, the first tissue type is a loose connective tissue. It is areolar. Areolar, loose connective tissue. It is a type of connective tissue proper. So this is like actual connective tissue connecting other tissue types together. The, uh, the ground substance is gel-like, okay? So the extracellular matrix that it's, everything's floating around in is sort of, a, sort of a gel. It has all three of the different fiber types. So there is co collagen, elastic, um, and reticular fibers in here. We've got uh, fibroblasts, of course. So here we can see in this picture, we've got fibroblast nuclei. Um, so those again are the actively dividing connective tissue cells. So these guys are, are working hard to make more of this areolar loose connective tissue. Um, this type of connective tissue can be found uh, wrapping and cushioning your organs, okay? Um, the macrophages, which are cells that um, consume um, either, um, not toxins, but like bad non-self cells, they phagocytize bacteria, right? So bacteria are, are pathogens, they're bad non-self cells. So they go around um, eating bacteria. Um, so it plays an important role in inflammation, right? Because if you have an injury, you're going to end up getting bacteria inside of your body somewhere. Um, if, if it's in loose areolar connect tissue, which odds are it, ha was, it has been disturbed because uh, it is widely distributed right underneath your skin, right? So that basal membrane, that basal structure underneath the epithelium of your skin uh, is areolar loose connect tissue. So when you get a cut on your skin, those uh, um, macrophages um, are going to be activated and come in and, and eat any kinds of um, pathogens that got in through the cut. Um, and we've got also um, tissue fluid being, um, being held here and moved around the body. Um, so kind of um, like if you know that you can see if you're dehydrated by pinching your skin, right? If your skin goes, bounces right back, then you're properly hydrated. And if you can hold it there, if it will like sort of slowly go back, then you're dehydrated. Check your dog too and check, check your little face, you know, to see if they're dehydrated. Um, that's because of your areolar loose connective tissue um, holding the fluid that your body should have. Okay, so widely distributed under the epithelia of the body, so underneath um, your skin and also as the basal membrane to the epithelium that's lining um, your other, your digestive tract, right? Your gut. Um, the mucous membranes, which are, which are again, uh, epithelium, um, it's going to form a, a membrane um, underneath or um, amongst those um, layers of epithelia. Uh, areolar loose connective tissue packages your organs, okay? So it helps to protect them from um, being jarred and it insulates them and surrounds capillaries. So again, protects them um, from stuff, from, you know, being jostled, really. 
So areolar loose connective tissue. Let's see how Dr. Lee does with stuff like this. So loose connective tissue. Oh, my thing's in the way. Dense connective tissue. Well then, we must be, oh, we could be here. Let's be here. All right, what do we got? Yes, yes, that's the idea. That's what I want, thank you. Okay, so we've got the, um, the um, apical um, side of our epithelial tissue, right? Because we're looking at skin here. So this is the, um, the simple squamous, um, or sorry, not simple, the stratified squamous epithelium of the skin of the integument here, right? As you go deeper, you've got connective tissue, right? This, oops, is dense irregular. Not what I wanted. We'll talk about that later. Adipose, also not what I wanted. Well, let's see what we got. Oh, wow. Okay, so we're not actually even talking about areolar connective tissue here, even though. So maybe this is a different part of the body where there is not as much of the areolar connective tissue here. So let's see. Because it does differ on different parts of your body. Loose connective tissue. Yeah, that's areolar. I wish I knew what this was from. I would like to know like, what is this a chunk of? That would be cool. Um, okay. Well, at least you can see the different types of cells in this areolar. Loose connective tissue. There is a mast cell. We've got a collagen fiber. Where is my collagen fiber? There's my collagen fiber right there. Um, you can pretty much tell because it's not branched. Let's see what the other fiber is, how they are going to show us these things. Show me. Oh, okay, mast cell. No, I want the. Show me an elastic fiber. I thought that was a collagen fiber. All right, fine. Like I said, I'm not gonna be able to make you identify the different fiber types based on an image like this. I'm gonna have to identify them for you and maybe ask you what that type of fiber is used for um, or what type of tissue are we looking at if the types of fibers in it will help you to identify it. On uh, Wiley Plus, let's see if we can find, there's some adipose, elastic, cartilage, dense, regular, dense, irregular, mm -hmm. pseudostratified, bastard. <laughs> well, we can see if there's areolar here. Statified in the more superficial aspect, dead cornified layer. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm not seeing areolar. Oh, duh. There it is right there in the front. Okay. Yep. Um, it's actually pretty consistent, if you ask me. That looks pretty much like the other images um, that we've been looking at. Again, um, a, a gel-like ground substance. We've got um, fibroblasts throughout, um, macrophages 
And then all three types of fibers are in here, which I would have to label for you if I were to ask you um, what this is. Are we guys, are we okay with um, aerial or loose connective tissue? So far so good. Let's move on to adipose loose connective tissue. So this is our adipose tissue. This is our fat tissue, right? Um, the, the matrix is similar to areolar connective tissue in terms of like a gel-like ground substance, but it's very sparse because it is being separated out by these ginormous big round fat cells, which are actually cells um, but they have a huge, like, kind of, a, kind of like a central vacuole, which is full of lipid, right? It's full of fat, a fat droplet. So the nucleus of these cells is pushed over to the side. So it kind of looks like, they kind of look like um, rings with a gemstone or something, okay? So it's like a little, like a diamond ring. Um, and these are fat droplets uh, inside of uh, cells that are designed to carry uh, these lipids in a huge central vacuole. So these provide fuel, right? Because we know that lipids provide long-term fuel storage as being very large macromolecules. Um, adipose loose connective tissue uh, uh, insulates against heat loss, of course, right? It keeps us warm. And then it uh, also supports um, and protects organs, right? So you also have a fat layer. around your organs that um, helps to protect them, right? And provide, and provide fuel, provide that food source. You can find it under your skin in the hypodermis, right? So in the layers of your skin, beneath the connective tissue of the um, uh, uh, basal membrane, um, you, have, you, may, you will see a layer of adipose, loose connective tissue. Um, they're also around your, um, some of your uh, important organs, right? Like your kidneys and your eyeballs, in your abdomen, right? Your belly and in the breasts, right? You've got fat tissue um, forming most of the bulk there. Um, and we saw, no adipose tissue, oh, we did, right? In the skin, did we see that? Yes, we did, okay, so. In the Dr. Lee's, we had adipose tissue over here, which is um, just deep, right, to the epithelial layer, that stratified squamous epithelial tissue that makes up the actual um, integument, right? We've got all this connective tissue, which is connecting the epithelial tissue of your integument to the underlying um, tissue, which in this case is fat, okay? So we've got epithelial tissue. Um, this is actually dense, regular connective tissue we'll talk about in a minute. And then deep to that, underneath your skin, is a layer of adipose tissue, okay? So you've got this fat tissue, again, the fat cells are, have a, are, hold a droplet of lipid, and their nuclei are pushed over to the side um, for each of these cells. And you do have an extracellular matrix, kind of like areolar tissue, in between these fat cells, but um, it's, just, it's been being dispersed by the fat cells themselves. Okay. Um, for Wiley, we've got a gorgeous, gorgeous picture here. Look at that. What a beauty. So here's our little fat cell with the nucleus pushed aside, right? Uh, extracellular matrix in between in some, in some cases, in some places over here. All right, any question about adipose loose connective tissue? That one's pretty straightforward, I think. All right, reticular loose connective tissue. So judging by the name, what type of fiber do you think is prominent in reticular loose connective tissue? You got it, reticular fibers, and there they are, and they're all very branchy, right? The reticular fibers are very, very branched. Um, here's a lymphocyte. So reticular loose connective tissue is, again, reticular fibers in uh, 
this a similar type of ground sub substance, so um, loose extracellular gel-like extracellular matrix, um, and um, reticular cells, which um, are just specific to this. Uh, con loose connective tissue type, um, not necessarily associated with reticular fibers, um, just cells that are the cells of reticular loose connective tissue. Um, these reticular fibers uh, that are interspersed uh, between all of the reticular cells of reticular loose connective tissue um, form this um, kind of like a, a dense, um, almost like a netting um, so it's an internal skeleton stroma, as in almost like um, uh, like catacombs or something. It supports a lot of other cell types that are also in there, including white blood cells, um, also known as lymphocytes, um, mast cells, which are another type of immune cell, and macrophages, again, another type of immune cell. We find reticular loose connective tissue in um, organs associated with your lymphatic system. So lymph nodes, um, bone marrow inside of your bones and in the ends of long bones, and your spleen, right? So your spleen is mostly uh, reticular loose connective tissue. So it makes it um, sort of um, spongy um, and very strong, hard to tear, okay? Let's see if we've got, I don't think we've got uh, like, spleen here, but oh, it's worth a look. Bone, bone, lots of bone, 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 bone. Okay, then let's look at Wiley. Um, apocrine gland. Oh, we should have looked at that. Too bad. It's, it's done now. I'm not, I'm gonna do it. Dense irregular cartilage. Got any spleen? What else? Lymphoid, lymph, lymph bones, lymph bones, lymph nodes. God, I'm losing it. Lymph nodes, thymus. Oh, lymph node, hello. Excellent. Oh, is that it? Ugh. Okay, well, all right. Since it's a lymph node, you know that it is. Um... Oh, here we go reticular tissue. Looks like we've got some adipose um, surrounding it. So we've got adipose loose connective tissue surrounding it and the lymph node itself looks like a whole lot of reticular loose connective tissue. Look at all of those reticular fibers in blue. Um, yep, that's, that's about it. So it looks like it's, so it's more dense than areolar loose connective tissue, right? And it doesn't have the um, the fat cells that are so identifiable for adipose connective tissue. Okay. Oh, and there's an actual specific one for reticular connective tissue. That's nice. Oh, lovely. Oh, yeah. Let's zoom in. Okay. And so once again, reticular cells and uh, along with macrophages and mast cells, um, various immune cells. Uh, interspersed throughout this web, a total web of um, reticular fibers, branched reticular fibers. What is this? Lymph node. Yep, so this is basically a zoomed in image of what we were just looking at with the lymph node where we couldn't zoom in. All right, how are we doing? We okay with the loose connective tissues? We had three types, right? Areolar, adipose, reticular. Should Areolar, adipose, reticular, <laughs> okay? I'm gonna move on. We're gonna talk about the dense connective tissues, okay? The first is dense regular connective tissue. Dense regular, dense irregular, and elastic. All right, dense regular connective tissue. We've got lots of parallel running fibers of collagen, okay? So we're going to be able to differentiate between this and, ooh, muscle tissue. It's a little bit of a fine line here because 
this dense regular connective tissue is basically forming like the ends of your skeletal muscle. So if it's if it's made up if it's making up ligaments or if it's making up tendons in particular, then that is basically the like the white part where the muscle connects to the bone. So um, the tendon connects connects bone to muscle, right? Um, so it is that tendon that is going to be made of dense regular connective tissue. Ligaments um, hold bones and bones together, okay? They are also going to be made out of dense regular connective tissue. So lots and lots of collagen, um, some elastic fiber, and these, the cells uh, in between all of this, all this dense, hence the dense um, connective tissue, um, fibrous mass, are going to be um, fibroblasts, right? Because they're making more of that connective tissue. So uh, t in the form of tendons, they attach muscle to bone uh, or muscle to muscle. And in the form of ligaments, they attach bone to bone. They can withstand, withstand great tensile stress, right? So obviously, if we're like lifting heavy things, we really want for that to stay strong and keep holding the muscle to the bone and the bone to the muscle. Um, aponeuroses, I don't remember. I think that's like the ends. It has something to do with your joints. Don't worry about it. If we get to it in joints, then we get to it in joints. For now, dense regular connective tissue contains mostly collagen fibers, some elastic fibers, and fibroblasts, and uh, makes up tendons and ligaments, okay? Any questions? No, nope, I'm good. Yay. Moving on. Dense regular, now we have dense irregular, okay? So dense regular was really nice, and they're nice, nice lines and, and very fibrous. Um, irregular, it looks a little bit like a mishmash compared to that, right? Um, so we've got irregularly versus it being all in a nice line, irregularly arranged collagen fibers. So they're kind of like all over the place, all tangled up, again with some elastic fibers. And again, the major cell type is fibroblasts. So it looks a little bit different, which is nice. The, um, the big difference is what type of tissue, where it's located. So the capsules that your, all of your joints are inside of um, is made up of connective tissue. Specifically, it's made up of dense, irregular connective tissue. So every one of the joints, the, the um, synovial, the hinge joints, the ball and socket joints of your body, they're inside a sac um, full of synovial fluid, full of fluid that lubricates the joint. That sac is made out of dense, irregular connective tissue. So it forms the fibrous capsules of joints and some organs. Um, it is, can be found in the dermis, which is the, um, the layer right underneath the epidermis of your skin. And the submucosa of the digestive tract, which is kind of like the equivalent of the dermis to the epidermis. So it's basically like another layer down below um, the, um, the epithelium and the basal layer of your digestive tract. Okay. So we have our loose connective tissue proper, areolar, adipose, and reticular. We have our dense connective tissue proper, dense regular, dense irregular, and now finally, elastic dense connective tissue. Elastic dense connective tissue. Sorry, I should look for an example. Let's find an example of dense irregular first. It's so uh, yeah, joint capsules are uh, dense, dense. Oh, thanks for all the help. Ooh look at all of that. I'm seeing adipose, I'm seeing lots of dense irregular. I wonder what this is actually from. Well, seeing some, ooh, could be areolar and then 
dense irregular looks like in here because we've got sort of a swirling mishmash compared to the dense irregular. This must be part of a blood vessel. You can see the red blood cells through there. Very cool. Um, probably won't use it for anything except for dense regular. So let's see if we can find anything else with dense irregular. No joint stuff. Nope. Okay. Let's check out Wiley. Dense irregular, dense regular, dense irregular. Sweet. Here we go. Collagen, collagen, oh my god. Collagenous, 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 connective tissue from the reticular layer of the dermis. Okay, so like I was saying, the, um, the epidermis is the part you can touch, the dermis is just deep to that. And the, uh, this dense, uh, irregular connected tissue uh, is what that is mostly made up of. So uh, there we go again. So um, again, image quality, that's okay. Um, but I would have to tell you what this is. I would have to tell you that this is the, um, that this is the dermis. Um, and maybe point out like specifically something that looks particularly swirly, you know, like this kind of stuff in here. So it would be tough. Some of this, we've got like adipose mixed in here too. So this would be a tough image to use. Um, I would go with probably something more like this to give you a good idea of um, the difference between, actually your textbook has a really, your textbook uses that. Wait a second. Wow. Okay. So according to your textbook, this is a, this is, a, this is the lumen of a blood vessel right here. So you can actually see, let's see, let me zoom in. We can see the, uh, the simple squamous epithelium lining the inside of that blood vessel. Um, and then we've got nuclei of fibroblasts within the dense, irregular connective tissue. So all of this all around that blood vessel is all dense, irregular connective tissue. So cool, that's on page 135 of your textbook, by the way. All right, cool. All right, finally, elastic dense connective tissue to wrap up our um, connective tissue proper. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're really going somewhere now. Oh, and we're going, we're blasting right through our 20 minute break. I'm so sorry. I hope that's okay with you guys. Um, okay. Uh, elastic dense connective tissue is used in, used in, it's found in um, major blood vessels. So like the aorta from which, uh, through which blood directly from your heart goes to the entire rest of your body. It has to be very, very strong and very, very elastic, right? It has to be able to stretch a lot and come back to its normal shape. So we have lots and lots of elastic fibers in elastic dense connective tissue. Um, it's kind of nice in this picture. They look kind of just sort of squiggly. And I think that's pretty generally speaking true of most in images that you'll find. Um, and certainly of the one that I may use for your um, practical exam. So the, um, the concept of the tissue being able to recoil after being stretched is super duper important for these. Um, so in the, in the walls of large arteries like your aorta, um, within certain ligaments uh, in the vertebral column that need to be able to um, stretch and return to their normal shape, and the walls of your bronchial tube. So again, helping with the, um, the passive flow of, um, or the, the recoil of your lungs following inspiration. So you inspire, 
And then if you just relax, the air will naturally flow out of your lungs because this elastic dense connective tissue is going to sort of like recoil back into its normal spot. Okay, so connective tissue proper, six types, right? Three loose, areolar, adipose, reticular, three dense, dense regular, dense irregular, and elastic. Cool? Moving on. <laughs> All right, still connective tissue, just not connective tissue proper, okay? Um, cartilage. There are three types of cartilage that we need to talk about. Hyaline, elastic, and fibrocartilage. Let's start with hyaline. Hyaline cartilage is the, by far, most widespread type of cartilage in your body. It is uh, um, firm, so it's not terribly squishy. Um, collagen fibers um, make up almost the entire matrix. So you can't even see the fibers. They're so densely packed and they go right up against the, um, the chondrocytes, right? Which are the, um, the cells, the cartilage cells, right? So this is all very, very dense and fibrous um, with collagen fibers forming an imperceptible network. You can't even see them because they're so dense. The chondroblasts um, and chondrocytes are going to be uh, producing this collagen matrix, okay? And when they're mature as chondrocytes, um, they, uh, they lie in special, it hangs out in a special little bubble. Um, it's like a bubble in the matrix and then the little chondrocyte chills in that bubble. The bubble is called a lacuna. My dog's chasing my cat. Stop that. Um, so um, we'll talk more about lacunae when we talk about bones. We find hyaline cartilage throughout the body. It forms most of the embryonic skeleton. So when you're still a little bitty baby and your bones have not ossified or, yeah, haven't ossified or turned to calcium yet, um, turn into bone yet. Um, it's all cartilage. So your entire skeleton is basically cartilage until it's replaced slowly with bone as you grow up. As an adult, uh, hyaline cartilage still covers the very ends of your long bones to protect them because they're usually involved with joints, right? So all that rubbing is a problem. We want to have cartilage there to kind of like keep things going smooth there. Um, so they're in the joint cavities at the ends of long bones, the costal cartilage of the ribs. So the cartilage oops, that connects the ribs to the sternum um, is made of hyaline cartilage. And the cartilage of your nose, so this cartilage here, the cartilage that make the rings of your trachea that you can feel here, um, and your, the cartilage in your larynx, so your, um, your voice box, is all hyaline cartilage. All right. There was not any hyaline in here, was there? Or wait, there was no, oh, developing bone, developing bone? Mm -hmm. Developing bone one. Let's start there, shall we? Cool. We'll talk more about that when we get to bone. Let's try developing bone two. What you got? What you got? Osteoblasts and osteocytes, bone cells. We want to look at cartilage cells. So let's see if we got cartilage cells here. Okay. So, ooh. Oh God. There's like too much going on here. Okay, so in, a, in developing bone, like I was saying before, bone grows from the ends, right? So if it stays, um, when you're very, very young, it's cartilage. And then that the ossification, um, the turning of cartilage into bone starts in the middle 
and that bone starts moving out towards the ends. So the very, very end, you end up with a cap of cartilage at the end of your long bone, but long before then and all while you're growing up, the ends of your long bones remain um, cartilage. So you still have That's telling you about this, this, the, this layer, but I don't care about that. I don't care about that either. Can we not have the, can we not have the structure? Excellent. Okay. This is hyaline cartilage. Okay. The collagen fibers um, making up this extracellular matrix, making up the ground um, substance again are too tightly packed to differentiate individual fibers. The chondrocytes are living in like these little hollow bubbles within the um, sort of built into all of those collagen fibers called a lacuna, plural lacunae. And so here's the chondrocyte, here's its nucleus, and it's living inside of its lacuna. Inside, uh, within the um, ground substance, of this uh, hyaline cartilage, okay? Yep, yeah, so this is all hyaline cartilage here, making up the end of this long bone. Let's see what we've got over here. I have a question, Ashley. No, yeah, is... go for it, go for it. Um, how many questions are gonna be in our test? I'm gonna keep it the same. I'm gonna keep it the same. So, or sorry, I, I know that we, we talked about this, right? So the, um, for the lab practical, uh, it'll be the same. I'll ask you two questions per image. Okay. And then for the lecture exam, I'm gonna make it 50 questions instead of 25. So they'll be worth two points each instead of four. Um, yeah, so okay. yeah. So 50 questions, two points each for both the lecture and the lab exam now. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I know you guys, my, my never ending guinea pigs. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you next semester. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, only if you want to, you know. <laughs> I, I don't blame you. Uh, oh, I forgot to come and look at this elastic loose connective tissue, which is kind of cool. It looks the same. It's the squiggly line. Um, I don't see a lot of cartilage. Oh, fibrocartilage. Nope, hyaline cartilage. Hello. Cool. Okay, cool. Look at this. So we've got um, hyaline cartilage, muscle, blah, 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 blah. Cartilage in a developing fetal bone. Growing tissue. Smooth. Okay. Whatever. This is the most recognizable part of it right down here, especially because it's closer to being blue, which all the rest of our hyaline cartilage um, examples were blue for some reason. This one was just stained pink, but yeah, an extracellular matrix, collagen fibers, too dense to be um, individually seen, and all of our little lacunae houses, housing our little chondrocytes. How cute, 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 cute. Okay, any questions about hyaline cartilage? That is cartilage type one. Cartilage type two, elastic cartilage. It is a sort of similar to hyaline cartilage, but you also have elastic fibers. Cool, right? So hyaline cartilage is all collagen and elastic car cartilage is same except plus elastic. We've got uh, for function, uh, maintaining the strength of structures, but also it is flexible. So hyaline cartilage is very, very firm. Elastic cartilage is much more flexible because of the elastic fibers. Um, it is not so bendy that um, it's fluid. It's not fluid. Um, it's just more um, bendable. So you still have um, lacunae, little bubbles in it for your chondrocytes to live in. They still need like, because it's, it's basically like a solid, so they still need like a little house to be built in it because they're not floating around in it and they're not like trapped. They can't move around, right? So they have to have like a little hollow house inside of the solid structure of this cartilage to live in. So there are also lacunae for the chondrocytes in elastic cartilage as there were for chondrocytes in hyaline cartilage. 
The external ear is where you find elastic cartilage. So again, very bendy. That is in contrast to like the cartilage of like your nose or the cartilage of like your, the ribs, the ribs and sternum junction, right? The costal cartilage of your ribs um, or the cartilage of your joints, which I guess you can't really feel externally. You can't palpate that so much. Um, and then your epiglottis, right? Which is of course your little like punching bag in the back of your throat. Um, that too is made of elastic cartilage. So uh, I'm assuming that we don't have any elastic cartilage going on over here because we've got bone and bone and bone and dense connective tissue. So let's check out Wiley Plus for some um, elastic cartilage. Hey, hello. Ooh, neato. Oh, from the, okay, so this is from your oracle, which is your, your ear, your pinna of your external ear. Um, we can see the elastic fibers in um, elastic um, cartilage, right? Hyaline cartilage, this was all just so dense that it was looked like a uniform color, right? Whereas in elastic cartilage, you can see the fibers uh, more clearly. Um, but also, but it's other, other than that, it's pretty similar um, in appearance, right? Not necessarily in texture. You've got lacunae that chondrocytes are chilling inside of. Um, and there is, um, there is collagen fibers in here as well. Okay. That's elastic cartilage as opposed to hyaline cartilage. Elastic cartilage, last cartilage type is fibro cartilage. Um, this is a, a little bit less firm than uh, hyaline cartilage. It's also um, less, um, uh, there's less of it in your body. Um, there are lots of thick cart uh, collagen fibers which are visible in fibro cartilage. Um, so fibro is in like, it's very fibrous, right? So this type of cartilage as opposed to hyaline or elastic um, is very like striated, like long, like stringy. It's very stringy. You also have lacunae for your chondrocytes to live in because it's still solid, it's still solid, even though it's a little bit more flexible than hyaline cartilage. Um, this is uh, mostly important for shock absorption, okay? So whereas hyaline cartilage uh, was very, very firm to maintain a structure and elastic cartilage is more bendy to maintain structure but also flexibility, fibrocartilage is, for, is to protect against impact. So it's supposed to absorb um, shock or of impact, um, which makes it the perfect type of cartilage to be uh, your intervertebral discs, right? So the discs that separate each of your vertebrae in your um, spinal column are made out of fibrocartilage. The pubic symphysis, which is the bone of um, the, oh, sorry, the pubic symphysis is a piece of cartilage that connects the two sides of your pelvis together. Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Oh, nope, it is not. Professor, I don't mean to interrupt. Yeah, no, no, what's up? There's a few students that I guess are logged into your lecture part of Zoom. Mm -hmm. and they can't get into this one. So they're waiting on that one over there trying to get to you. Um, Desiree, let me know that there's a few of them over there. Wow. So okay. So oh, I see. Because it because it, it ended. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think so. That's why. And then they're trying to get drive, back in. And they're trying to get over. Um. Well. It'll be recorded, right? So it's it going to be recorded. Um. What I'll do is, uh, I'm going to finish this. Where are we at? Five thirty. We have until six thirty. I'm going to finish um, connective tissue, and then I will. St I'll start. I'll just do muscle and nerve during the la during the lecture. So I'll just jump over there as soon as I finish this. We're almost done. Okay. We're almost done with the next issue. Okay, I'll let, I'll let this rain yeah, Let them know. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We're all working together. This is annoying. Yeah. <laughs> 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 thank you. Okay. Yep. Nope. Thank you. Oh my God. 
All right, so shock absorption, uh, fibrocartilage for your intervertebral discs, um, the discs inside of your knee joint that actually like cushion um, impact when you jump up and down, and then the pubic symphysis, which holds the two sides of your pelvis together. It's right in the middle. Okay. All right, finally, we've got bone tissue and blood. So bone tissue um, uh, is, uh, has two different uh, major types. You've got um, compact and you've got spongy bone. So compact bone, like you can see in this image here, is very, very dense, right? It's very compact, hence the name. Um, osseous tissue. So because it is so dense and solid and hard, um, obviously you can't, um, cells aren't going to be able to like flow through it. You can't have like blood vessels or anything. Um, you notice in the other three, not the other, in the cartilaginous types of, of connective tissue, there was, there was, they were completely avascular, right? Osseous tissue is not actually avascular. Even though it's solid, uh, it has its ways. Um, namely, these central canals. So um, bone tissue is made up of these round structures called osteons. And in the middle of each osteon is a central canal that blood vessels and nerves can pass through. So that blood and the nerve supply um, can reach the bone cells, which are also in little lacunae, right? In their little bubble, in their little house, in the bone tissue. Um, in order for them to um, get nutrients. So of course, bone supports and protects your body. It supports it by holding you upright, protects it in terms of like your rib cage and your pelvis, protecting important organs. It provides levers for your muscles, so it's important for movement. You also store calcium and other minerals in your bone tissue. Um, and then in the hollow center of your long bones and inside of the um, spongy bone of the ends of your bones, you also store um, fat and marrow, um, which is um, for energy storage and of course um, for blood production, for blood formation, hematopoiesis, poesis, right? Um, here's a pretty picture of um, what spongy bone tissue versus the compact bone tissue uh, looks like for your bones. Certain bones like your scapulae, right, your shoulder blades and your pelvis that are flat, they're made up only of spongy bone tissue with just an outer shell of compact bone tissue. Um, but it's all still bone tissue. The compact bone tissue, since it's not um, sort of like, um, how it doesn't have lots of canals like your spongy bone tissue, right? It's spongy because it's like a sponge has lots of this open air space for blood vessels to pass through and move around. Because your dense bone tissue, your compact bone tissue doesn't have that. It has the central canals in the osteons to allow blood vessels to pass through the compact bone tissue. And those same blood vessels can travel freely through the spongy bone tissue of the ends of your long bones and in certain flat bones. Um, your bone, your long bones um, have three parts that we need to talk about, which we will talk about. Um, well, this is probably when we're gonna talk about it. So let's talk about it. You've got the ends of your long bones, which are called the epiphyses. Okay, so you have a proximal and a distal epiphysis for each of your long bones, right? one closer to your trunk and one farther away. And the shaft in the middle is called the diaphysis, okay? So proximal epiphysis, distal epiphysis, um, joined by the diaphysis in the middle. The diaphysis is in long bones hollow. The hollow inside of the diaphysis of your long bones is called the medullary cavity, okay? Um, by the way, the, per, the periosteum is that is a is just like a um, kind of like a serous membrane um, around your bone, right? So that's going to be your simple squamous epithelium, right? Um, except for at the ends of long bones where you have your um, hyaline cartilage. So inside of the medullary cavity of your long bones, the hollow tube that is the diaphysis of your long bones you're going to have yellow bone marrow, right? Which is fat. 
And in amongst the trabeculae, which is just the fancy word for all these different canals and stuff in the spongy bone, uh, you'll have red bone marrow, which is where you're going to have that hematopoiesis and uh, blood cell production. Okay. Zooming in a little bit more. So we had our little like chunk of bone. Here's our little medullary cavity uh, in the diaphysis full of yellow marrow. If we're looking at the compact bone tissue forming the shell around this, um, the shaft of the medullary cavity, you have, you can see the osteons, okay, which are basically like the smallest functional unit of bone tissue. So um, compact bone has these osteons. Here's what they actually look like under a microscope. Kind of cool, right? So here's one osteon all the way here. Each of these osteons, if we zoom in a little bit, has a central, um, has a, a central canal, which has blood vessels and nerves. Um, and then we've got uh, like these sort of like concentric ringed layers, kind of like the rings of a tree trunk. And within those, um, in between those layers, you have your little lacunae, which are, again, the little houses for the, this time, osteocytes, right? Because these are bone cells, right? So whereas they were chondrocytes, lacunae housing chondrocytes in cartilage tissue, these are lacunae housing osteocytes because we're talking about bone tissue. So each one of these little lacunae houses a little osteocyte. And here's what that cute little osteocyte looks like uh, in real life with an electron microscope. Cool, right? All right, so that's microscopic bone tissue. Um, it's a little bit weird, and I went into a little bit more detail than your book does at this particular moment because I'm not planning on reiterating this um, too much when we actually get to bones. I will a little bit, but that's the gist of bone tissue. Um, here's another picture depicting the exact same thing. Okay, so just multiple ways of looking at that. Any questions about bone tissue before I move on? I know, that was a lot. We'll let that sink in. <laughs> we'll let that sink in and, and uh, yeah. All right, our last connective tissue, blood tissue. We've got red and white, white and red blood cells floating around in a fluid extracellular matrix, which is basically your blood plasma, right? So your uh, ground substance in the case of blood is the plasma. The function is of course to transport nutrients, respiratory gases, wastes, and other substances throughout your body. And it is contained within your blood vessels, right? Which are your simple uh, squamous epithelium. Um, uh, let's, let's leave it there and I'm going to go into muscle tissue in the lecture portion. How does that sound? It's, it's long. <laughs> it's a long, it's a lot. I know it's crazy. I know it's crazy. I'm so sorry. Uh, so let me get back to... Okay, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna try to stop recording without messing this up. What time are these videos gonna go up tonight? Um, I don't think it's gonna take me too terribly long to um, convert them. So um, hopefully within an hour of us wrapping up. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna stop recording.